what's up? Welcome into your daily Buckeye Blitz for a thirsty Thursday, August 1st. It's the first of the month. Wake up, wake up, get up, get up. You know, I got to do it every first of the month. 2024, of course, obviously, we all know that. So uh, camp opens. Hooray. Uh, awesome. Uh, it's like Christmas. Uh, we are on this YouTube channel, podcast network, all of the above. We are full bore from here on out. No days off. All of our live shows will be back. Uh, me and Yolay took a trip to Sarasota for the last few days. So we were able to kind of have one more break before the uh, the season starts because uh, my Friday shows will be back 4.30 p.m. Eastern right here on YouTube Live. And then our Sunday night show is back. Me, Jeff, and Sean, we call it the TBC Weekly. Uh, me, Jeff, and Sean at 7.30 p.m. Eastern right here on YouTube Live. So I hope you will join us. Make sure you're subscribed. Hit the bell. You'll get notified whenever we go live and every time there's a new episode. The Daily Blitz is full bore every day. So get your little early morning nugget, hopefully, depending on when I can get to it. Uh, you know, sometimes work uh you gotta gotta make paper. Uh, this podcast does not pay for itself. Um, so everything is full bore. Camp is open. We're gonna have news and notes, updates over the weekend for sure. So uh, me, Jeff, and Sean are gonna be talking about those on Sunday night. Uh, we'll, Friday we'll probably talk a little Cruton. Maybe get a little update on uh, the big David Sanders news. And every all you guys can tell me that Justin Fry needs to be fired because we I don't hear that enough. Just kidding. That's sarcasm. Um, but today we're talking about uh, – so during Big Ten Media Days last week, Ryan Day touched on a, a few freshmen, quite a few freshmen actually, that he thinks will get will get some playing time this year. Not just the four-game minimum you know, to maintain your redshirt, but more than that. So who was he talking about? Let's get into it. We're going to have some uh, – some words from Ryan Day. So let's do it here. And don't forget, Fridays, 4.30 p.m. Eastern, YouTube Live. I will be live. Um, maybe we'll get Jeff or Sean to, to come on board. Anyway, uh, so Ryan Day is expecting a number of freshmen to play for the Buckeyes this year. Uh, every year, there's a bunch of true freshmen that, that could take on meaningful roles with the Buckeyes, but and you remember last year, uh, he talked about offensive lineman Luke Montgomery, uh, Carnell Tate, uh, Jermaine Matthews Jr., the corner, uh, Malik Hartford, the, the safety, that he he mentioned them by name last year. So um, each one of those players started and finished the season in the Buckeyes too deep. So that's a big deal for a true freshman at Ohio State anyway. Class of 2023, I'm going to run through uh, the guys that played and didn't. Um, Keen Holes, he redshirted. Uh, we did not bring in a running back, thanks to uh, Benedict Alford. Appreciate you, sir. Um, wide receiver, uh, Bryson Rogers, redshirted. Wasn't happy about it, so he hopped in the portal and hopped out. Then uh, Tate, Colonel Tate, Brandon Innes did not redshirt. Uh, Luke Montgomery, he was the only O lineman not to redshirt. Uh, Jelani Thurman, the tight end, red-shirted. Uh, defensively, uh, DN uh, Joshua Mickens, he red-shirted. And your D-tackles, Jason Moore and Will Smith Jr., both red-shirted. Uh, linebackers, Arvell Reese did not red-shirt. Uh, corners, Calvin Simpson Hunt, he red-shirted last year. And uh, safety, uh, Jaden Bonsu red-shirted, but Malik Hartford did not. So um, this year... Ryan Day is pointing out another handful of freshmen with immediate expectations on them. Uh, Day was asked which freshmen could see the field this year. Um, yeah, so uh, he, he always says, quote, we do this and then I forget people. Jeremiah Smith is definitely playing this year, but who's joining him? We know that. We don't need to say Jeremiah. That's, that's a given, right? Ryan Day said running backs, James Peoples and Sam Williams Dixon. The running back roster is one man short of Day's preference for that group. He prefers five. They've got four scholarship guys right now. Ryan Day said, quote, obviously the two running backs are going to have to play. They're going to have to play. They're going to get in games and get carries. 
Now, receivers, Mylon Graham and Demarion Witten are the two freshman receivers. Uh, neither one enrolled early, so they just got here back in June. Uh, that puts them behind everyone else. But Ryan Day said, quote, Mylon and Demarion uh, just got here, so when you get here in summer, you're a little bit behind, so you've got some ground to cover. So you could see them maybe making more of an effect midseason and beyond, you know, maybe after week eight into the latter part of the season, you could see them getting into games possibly. Um, and the Buckeyes have 10, <clears throat> excuse me, 10 true freshmen on the defensive side of the ball, eight of them enrolled early back in January. So they're on, on course. Uh, the highest ranked recruit was defensive end Edric Houston. Uh, he should be in line for playing time for sure. Brian Day said, quote, Edric Houston has probably flashed the most, uh, but we're pretty deep at defensive end. It's a fair point. Uh, you got your uh, your two deep is Jack, JT, um, Kenyatta Jackson, and Caden Curry. But you got to think Edric is in that three deep, which you got to have three dudes. Um. The secondary has a couple of guys who will play this year. Safety Jalen McClain, he stood out in the spring. Cornerback Aaron Scott, he got better and better over uh, spring ball. Ryan Day said, quote, Jalen McClain has done a nice job, so he'll see some time this season for sure. Aaron Scott, as the spring went on, he flashed more and more. Uh, he had a good summer. Uh, Bryce West was injured, so I haven't really seen him do a whole bunch, but we'll kind of see what we got there. So kind of a wait and see approach with with Bryce West. Um, maybe he can he can develop quickly over the summer, stay healthy, obviously, and into fall camp. Um, on the linebackers, he really just said on Garrett Stover and Peyton Pierce, we'll see. Right. So um, maybe that means um, special teams work, or again, maybe work later in the season. These guys are still developing their bodies and getting used to the speed of the college game. So that's a, that's a quite a bit of of work to to get into. Um, Buckeye, oh, special teams can't leave them out. Unfortunately, uh, Buckeye signed punter Nick McLarty out of Australia. I don't know how to do an Irish Australian accent. Hello, mate. Let's put another shrimp on the uh, cabbage. Um, anyway, I'll work on that. Uh, they also brought in uh, transfer punter Anthony Veneri from Buffalo. So that punting competition starts today in fall camp. Uh, Ryan Day talked about it quickly here. He said, yeah, so the punter, that's going to be a battle that goes into probably the third week to see if they can win the job. We've got three or four guys in there that are going to be in the mix. McClarty has got a big leg. Uh, he's young, so we'll kind of see. Uh, we've got another guy with some experience coming in, but those guys are important, so we'll kind of see what that looks like. So, uh, yeah, we'll see. Um, so the 2024 red shirts, I'll give you my quick rundown, who I think red shirts and who doesn't. Uh, Air Nolan, I believe, starting with the quarterbacks, he – Red shirts, but Julian saying, I say he does not red shirt. I think he plays more than four games. Uh, running backs, both of them do not red shirt. James Peoples, Sam Williams, Dixon, both of them are going to have to play well more than four games. Uh, wide receiver, Mylon Graham, I believe he red shirts. Um, and uh, Jeremiah Smith, hell no. <laughs> That's an obvious hell no. And uh, we forget that he's actually a, a true freshman. Demarion Witten, I think he red shirts as well. On the O line, I think everybody red shirts, both the Armstrong twins, Gabe Van Sickle, but Ian Moore, I think, cracks a three deep and will not red shirt. Um, <clears throat> tight end, Max LeBlanc, uh, he red shirts. I think he just needs to get his body up to speed. Tight ends never, never play as a freshman at Ohio State. It's virtually impossible. Um, defensive ends, you got Edric Houston. No, of course not. Uh, Dominic Kirks. Yes, I believe he red shirts. Uh, he's kind of a development project. Uh, D tackle Eric Mensa. I believe he red shirts. He's also developing linebackers. I got both Pierce and Stover red shirting. That room's kind of, kind of packed right now with high end, uh, um, upperclassmen with talent. So, 
corners. Miles Lockhart, I think he red shirts just because of the number of guys in front of him. You got Lorenzo Styles Jr. probably going to work in at the slot. Uh, Jermaine Matthews was working there in the spring, so uh, there's a lot of a lot of bodies in front of Lockhart. So I think he red shirts continues to develop. Um, Aaron Scott, no, I think Aaron Scott definitely plays more than four games. I think he's he might not be your second corner in, but he's he's third or fourth. Um, Bryce West, I believe he red shirts. Uh, the injury kind of set him back back in spring, so I think he, they're just going to play it safe with him. Um, they don't really need him in the corner room, you know, this season. Safety is Jalen McLean. No, I I think he does not redshirt. Uh, he's definitely going to play more than four games. And uh, Leroy Roker, uh, he, I believe he redshirts. He's another uh, lower rated but kind of developmental project. We'll see how he develops over the season. So, and he's also a, a summer enrollee. So, uh, again, kind of behind, but. Those are my predictions for the red shirts this year. And along with Ryan Day's comments, who he thinks is going to contribute. It's always a big deal to get the, the head coach to mention your name as a freshman. That means you need to have your antenna up and be ready for some for some serious snaps. So that's all I got for you today. Hey, talk to you tomorrow. Go Bucks.